Hello everybody, welcome to Kitchen Gadget Testing 51. Wow. Uh, massive shout out to all of you before we get started. For anyone that did the Kitchen Gadget Testing Barathon video, all 50 of the previous ones bunched together on one video. Last time I looked, it had over 70,000 views, which is unbelievable. I really did not expect that. So if you did that and did the whole 16 odd hours, awesome. Remember, some of these gadgets are novelty, but some of them can help people uh, with disabilities and also just help them get back into the kitchen cooking and stuff. So please consider that before commenting down below. A real good mix today. This first one I did not actually get online, although if I can find it online, I'll leave a link down below. Mrs. Barry and I went to Bath a few weeks back, which is lovely if you're ever in the area. Really nice place. And I saw this sort of kitchen gadget style shop and I'm like, we're going in there. Uh, so we did spend a lot of time in there. And this thing uh, by a company called Masterclass is the triple sand egg timer. Now we do have the ultimate thing for that already that we've shown on here before. Here it is, the Elvis egg timer that sings at soft, medium and hard boiled eggs. So that one is really cool. I don't think this will ever be topped. Whereas this seems a bit more posh. We're gonna need this to make sure the moment we want to get our eggs out, it stops them cooking. Ice water. Nice. Soft, med, hard for proper hard boiled yolk on there. Okay, this is great. I mean, it looks really cool. Look at that. Three minutes for a soft egg, four minutes for a medium, and five minutes for a hard. Look, see, look at that. I like the different colour sands. That's nice, isn't it? You kind of like got the egg white, the egg yolk, and then like, ooh. Okay, let's just do a century egg one. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's been a long time since I've used a sand timer. Very old school. The only downside to this, despite the flashy posh packaging and the way it looks and the lovely fonts and all that stuff, and you know, it looks like a good quality thing, right? It's not actually telling someone that doesn't really know how to boil an egg, whether to put it straight from cold and warm it up as it cooks, or to put it in simmering water. Luckily, this guy can help. He's the expert. Generally what I'll do is get the water up to a steady simmer, which is what I'm gonna do now, then stick my eggs in, get the timer going then. I think that's fair enough. And most likely what that's designed for. Okay, so whilst that water is coming to a boil, remember that gadget? We might have something similar in a minute. Hint. There's a real big push about awareness of plastics and recycling at the moment, in particular with uh, the world of straws. In fact, anyone that's gone into McDonald's fairly recently and had a milkshake will know the pain of trying to suck a milkshake through a straw after about three or four minutes. It just kind of turns to like papyrus. But fear not, about two weeks ago in a pub, I saw a lady with one of these and I was like, what? Is she like vaping inside? No, uh, this is something I already ordered about two days ago. It arrived really quick indeed. Uh, it's called Simple Straws. There we go. I'm sure there's other brands available. I was like, is she vaping? Because it had like a case like this. This is a straw that you carry around. It's got a little thing you can put on your keyring. and go, yeah, I'm gonna drink. That's your carry case. And this, believe it or not, is not some sort of James Bond weapon. It should be. Ugh, come on. Yes. Oh, something fell out. Ah, oh, oh my gosh, it's your very own little, oh no, this retracts as well, look at this. Now then, your little brush. This is how you clean your straw, brilliant. I didn't think of that. So you can go right in and out like that. Right, let's role play. I'm a guy at a pub that's just ordered a, a, a soft drink. Thank you very much. Oh no, don't worry about the straw. I've got my own. Everyone's looking at you and you're like, yeah. But maybe in the future this will become the norm. Oh, that's good. You know, this is very obvious, but a metal straw does make a drink taste more metallic-y. It's weird. It feels like I'm literally drinking through a saucepan, but it works, you can do that. It's not bad, is it? Good for the environment, I guess. Cool. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Tick tock, tick tock. Here they go. Just like a Guinness World Record attempt. By the way, for my giant foods, I have contacted them several times. I mean, I don't know if I spoke to the wrong person, but they wanted to charge me thousands to verify that I'd made something giant already that was a world record. Mental. Uh, yes, independent adjudicator. Uh, Elvis is overseeing the egg timers here, and we're looking at the white one first of all. Got our ice bowl ready, and we will plunge. ASAP. Boom, gone, right, out you go, into there. Ah, oh, I bet that feels good. <laughs> Here we go, medium. Thought I picked up the wrong one then. <laughs> Boom, yes. 
Elvis is sort of looking on in mild jealousy, <laughs> really praying that they haven't worked. We're pulling out all the gadgets today. Look, do you remember this thing? This is an egg topper. Looks innocent. Ah, ouch. That's all I'm going to say. I can't remember if this gadget was any good. Normally, I tend to either give away or keep the good ones. Oh. Oh, dear. I might have to... Ah, oh dear. There we go. Let's rip that top off. <gasps> oh. Oh. I don't even think that's cooked. Look at that. No, that's raw still. Look, in fact, uh, the yolks, I mean, that's soft, but that is uncooked egg white. In other words, that didn't work. That's spraying out as well. That better not be egg white, come on now. Oh, there we go. This one, so the medium is a soft boiled egg. That is actually okay. So goodness knows what this one's gonna look like. Oh my gosh, that looks even worse. It's still runny. Well, in conclusion, I stuck those eggs into just boiled water exactly how I would with Elvis, and they've done that, whereas this has never let me down. Elvis, you're not leaving the building today. Yeah, I'm thinking that we might do that again, but put the eggs in cold water, bring it to a boil, then set the timer. That's my only thinking around it. But anyhow, have you ever heard of the phrase, you could put someone's eye out with that? Well, in the shopping bath, they also had one of these, um, this isn't a gadget video bath special. I'd love to do that in the Roman baths whilst being sponged. This is a spud gun. Like this is a legitimate gun that doubles up as a water pistol. This is a bit of a novelty one. Potatoes have eyes. Look, I went to the supermarket and picked out the most hideous looking potato I could that I thought no one would take home and care for. But me, yes, I love you. These, the eyes aren't eyes really. They're the actual growing points in the potato, aren't they? <sighs> this was actually quite expensive though. Um, so it's, it's a gun. It's the camera, this gives my James Bond audition. It's all about a potato gun. So I'm gonna go for the eye. This almost looks perfect, like it was made for it. And we scoop in like that. Oh, look, it's got a pellet of potato. <laughs> yes. That, that's, that's a spud gun. <laughs> Holy potatoes, Batman. Oh, you mucky pup, look at that. All right, this next one that I've just washed, in fact, uh, is by Sheffin. Uh, we've seen quite a lot of Sheffin over time. I've still got about a billion of their things upstairs. Very creative stuff, generally. Uh, quick stick snack slicer. Slice snacks faster and safer than with a knife. Uh, basically, it's this sort of vessel thing that I don't know if you can see there. It's kind of like got a, a cross at the top, which it does come out. That's all plasticky, but in there, Oh dear, that's dangerous in there. You do not want to be putting your hands in there. This uh, sort of links in with it, and I believe, yes, that's right. Of course I know how to use this thing. <laughs> it, it gets pushed down. You push the vegetables through there, and it will quarter it. So apparently it's also good for things like Brussels sprouts, tomatoes, grapes, strawberries, whatever. But we're going to go for some carrots and celery. The only problem I'm thinking is it ain't going to take the ends off the carrot. And it's also not gonna peel it. For best results, have longer foods. Let's not. Let's stick it on like this. Oh my gosh, look. Wow, that's amazing. And they got a carrot on the floor. It tucked in there really nicely. Now I can see why they're saying to cut it down because if you look, oh, those blades must be really sharp. You have gotta line it up from afar if you do it this way. But that is absolute genius. And then if, you, if your sticks are a little bit too big, you can then just halve it like that. That is one of the best gadgets I've done in quite a while, actually. And I've had it upstairs in my cupboard for a long old time. Stonking. This is why I love these videos. It's, it, of course, there's the fun and the, and the crazy wacky novelty ones and stuff like that. But these are legitimately can help a lot of people. And it's convenient. It's clever. My worst thing is when I do ones like this and I have really high hopes for them and they don't work. And there's been a lot of those. And this, I cannot fault that. That's really good and it's safe. It feels good. Remember, I'm not being paid to say this at all, but this, all I can say is the kids and Mrs. Barry are gonna be wanting me to get a lot of hummus in the house. Yeah, brilliant. This gadget uh, by Dream Farm is called Vibo. It washes, boils, steams and strains. And he thought I said stains in one basket. So it's kind of like a steaming bucket thing. 
And here we go. It looks like a swim cap. Or one of those ones they have in the hairdresser when you have highlights. Um, I had highlights, didn't I? Remember those times, guys? I would legitimately sit in the hairdressers like that. All these other guys up in the short back and swords. Yeah, right, mate, how's it going? You going out in the town tonight? Yeah, brilliant, yeah. And I'll be there, like, in the corner with this thing on my head with this guy pulling my hair through. It was cool. Not so much looking back. We will all make that mistake in our lives, folks. We've all done it. And if you haven't done it yet, you're doing it right now. So look in the mirror, take a look at yourself and go, wow, if you want. Uh, <laughs> so here we go. This is, this is it. It's, it looks like it's sort of a confused jellyfish with eyes. Like, hello. Uh, but this is going to be a bucket. It's got some feet on it. So if you get the water lower than that height, apparently, yes, 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 it, it will steam. Imagine like you've got your bucket of your veg. Why do I suddenly feel like Red Riding Hood? This is what it's designed for. You pick it up like this, you run your tap, and look, it's washing the vegetables for you. That's really cool. There's a couple of different ways that you can cook this. We can boil it, which is obviously submerging it fully in water, or you can steam it, which actually can, I believe, and it's my opinion as well, hold and retain the nutritional value of the vegetables. Although I saw on a forum quite recently, two people literally arguing over that. And I was thinking, <laughs> haven't these guys got anything better to do with their time? And then I realised I was literally reading it. Oh, in the words of Jaws, we're going to need a bigger saucepan, so we'll start afresh. Boom. Now you see, I filled that just enough so that it will boil, but not so that it's covering the vegetables. Stick the lid down like that, and this will steam it through. Whoa. <laughs> The only problem I've just spotted is, look, the bucket has just popped up. So I'm having to hold this down to prevent more steam escaping. We're sweating out this veg. But anyhow, that's enough of the steaming for now. Look, you can see that coming out. Woo. So what I'm doing now instead, obviously you wouldn't normally do this. You'd either steam it or boil it. But I'm filling the pan up with water. <laughs> the vegetables are pretty much cooked already. Yeah, look, it's gonna pop up, watch. <laughs> it's such a strong bucket, it's like, no, nope, go away, lid. Woo, nice. Look, there's another gadget. <laughs> I think I said at the time when I first got that, keep an eye out if we ever use it. We absolutely love it. I think it's called the caddy or something. Woo, I can't see much water coming out of that. It's supposed to drain it. Maybe it's done most of it for us already. Excited jellyfish, hello! You can then sort of just take it out and tip it oh, straight into your bowl. Yep, it's done. Oh. My mum always tells me when I was a baby, uh, when it came to eating baby food, there was only one food that I liked. Chocolate pudding, and I had to buy a six pack <laughs> because they didn't sell it individually. They had cottage cheese, chili con carne, loads of other stuff. But no, I love chocolate pudding. So for this gadget, which I found upstairs, and it's been in this wrapper for blooming ages. I basically got this box of gadgets, and as more and more arrive, some of them sort of shimmy to the bottom, a bit like the um, the sticks thing for the vegetables. Uh, but this label on it is called a Gear Max Bol Bebe. This is designed uh, for a baby. I thought it was a colander at first, or some sort of weird egg spinny gadget. But no, this is designed. So you you take the lid off, and in there. Is, is your bowl for your baby food. And it's designed so that, say you've got a toddler and they're like, Ugh, like that, you see how it's staying upright like that? And it, I think it's called a UFO bowl or something. You can literally go like that. It's got that whole sort of NASA inspired, when, you know, when they put the astronauts in the training thing, this is basically a mini one of those. So we're just gonna try it. Cause I think that's pretty cool. I mean, Phoebe and Chloe, if I offered this to them now, they'd probably be a bit offended cause they're older than that. But any people with young kids out there, I remember what it was like. Brilliant, perfect for my 14 month old and it's got a kid just going, oh, waste of money, really awful product. My toddler had figured out how to tip the food out of the bowl almost immediately, complete waste of money. So the toddler's sitting there going, right, okay, if I go like that, but look, oh no. Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? And I know what you're thinking, Barry, is this, oh, nice. Is this an excuse, Barry, for you to have chocolate pudding and get out, for nostalgia reasons, Phoebe and Chloe's little baby spoon. Damn right it is. Oh, it's already spilt out. I should have poured that in properly. Okay. 
So, well, it's tipping, it's tipping. There we go, get in the middle, right. So I'm a baby. In comes the aeroplane, all that. Oh my gosh. I'd be really disappointed if I had to have that right now. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's better than blended up carrots, but I would have expected more. So here we go, you're supposed to be like, oh, I'm a kid, I don't know how to eat. And you go, woo, like that. Look at that. Hello, daddy. And the food's there. Not that they're gonna eat it at that angle, you, you, you could. How far can we go with this? Oh my God, <laughs> look at that. That's actually really clever. Let's try and do it in slow-mo, right like that. Hey, spin it round, you can tilt it like this. What if you drop it? That's pretty good, you gotta admit. And it's got a nice little stand to try and keep it up, right like that. It tastes more like rice pudding, more milky. But look, this is, if you know anyone that's got a toddler and you wanna get them some sort of crazy little gift, it's not the most expensive thing, but that's really fun. I might just make a massive one of these and have it at my dinner time and impress all my friends. Sorry, that was me just signing this last gadget. If you don't know, every month on Patreon, I give away some signed gadgets, and this is the one I'm picking this month because it's substantial Christmas. We gave away four different ones. It's pretty cool. Uh, so this one is a bit of a nostalgic one. It's a little bit retro and novelty. It's a chocolate and caramel apple party in a box. Amazing. It's like a lazy Susan, you know, like a whole sort of spinny thing where you can have little dunking stations for your apple. We can either do a chocolate sauce in there or a caramel one. We're gonna do caramel. I don't know if it keeps it warm, if it gets plugged in. I don't know. Another random thing, when I sent one of the gadgets away, someone was like, uh, can you just do me a favor and not wash it? I was like, <laughs> okay. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. And it is, it is in a metal, ooh, I see cable. I see cable. I think it's gonna self-heat like a chocolate fountain thing. Brilliant. And then you've got, <laughs> have they individually wrapped all of these? Right. These are little segments. It's like I'm playing Trivial Pursuit right now. Oh no! As you know, me and American things have history. It doesn't matter. The basic context is very simple. Um, there's caramel in there, but I know how to make that anyway. Um, this sits on there, which is gonna rotate. And then this thing is sits in here so you can move it round. Now, a minute ago, I took these out as I was unpackaging it and it became a bit of a puzzle. So they do sort of fit in their own, oh my gosh, I've done it again. Because you've got these compartments for like toppings for your apple and this is like a rotation spot. Apple decorating trays, there we go. So that sits in there so you can rotate it. This gets warmed up uh, by the power cord, fingers crossed. And then this sits in there with your sauce that you've made of choice. So we are gonna make caramel sauce now. Should take about five minutes to so just whisk it or wooden spoon it and then add in a touch of vanilla extract and that's our sauce done. Okay, to stay safe, I'm using my step down converter thing. Uh, I've, I've sort of set it all up really, to be honest. We've got the apples that fit really snugly in these things and of course it will spin round if we want. The pot's in the middle with the heater bit. So this is the separate bit here, but we'll probably just pour it straight in. And then we've got some coconut, chocolate sprinkles, hundreds of thousands, all that stuff, edible glitter. Uh, and we're ready to go. Well, the only other thing I've got to do is these are the skewers it comes with. There's no sharp ends on it, but uh, straight up in there. And look, you can sort of spin it around in there. This is fun. So before sending this off to the winning patron, I'm totally gonna keep this and use it for Chloe's birthday party. Right, not sure if you can hear, but I just turned it on uh, at the wall. So there is now power through my step down converter going in to this central dish. Oh, I can feel heat, yes. The purpose of that heater anyway, there's no sort of temperature control on there. It's simply just to keep it warm. I guess we uh, we dip the apple. Oh my gosh. You Can you see it coming up now? Oh, we dip that in there. This is very, very hot. And then I guess we stick it in here and then we can just sort of spin it round put different toppings on it like that. I wasn't sure if you're supposed to roll it directly in the trays, but I think that'll make it dangerous. I'm in my element here, this is great. Amazing, look at that. Right, so it's gonna have to cool down. If you want it to harden up, 
stick it on something like that and then whack it in the fridge for about an hour. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna stick it in the fast fridge for 10 minutes. Oh no, in true Barry style, I actually got it wrong. What you need to do is put the toppings that you want into your tray like this. So say you want a coconut and a, a little beady one and uh, maybe just stick some of the, the pink stuff in there. In fact, let's put a bit of everything in there, why not? You then, you dunk your apple in like that and then in and then twist around like that. Okay, that's kind of, <laughs> it's putting my topping off, look at that. Oh wow, that looks like something from the 80s. That will do. I actually preferred my first method. Double dunk it and sprinkle. Wow. Oh, another gadget video in the bag. If you fancy having a barathon now, go back to number one on the playlist and watch them all the way through if you wish, or even the epic 16 hour plus video that I can't believe how many of you have watched that. Thank you so much for that. And if you've seen any cool gadgets, do let me know down below or on social media of choice. I'm everywhere at Mr. Barry Lewis. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Check your level player, no matter what your style, the kitchen's for me, Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. You still here? All right, this is the bonus egg scene that I promised. Uh, so here's the timer again. I've got six eggs on the go. There's already three in there. In that pan, there are three eggs, soft, medium, hard, we're gonna do. I've written the word cold on it because they've been in there since the water was cold. The moment it hits a boil, we're then gonna stick these three in, set the timer going to see how they compare. All six of the eggs have had a pin go in there to stop it cracking. So let's see what they turn out like. Quite the lineup of extraordinary Egg pun. Uh, usual suspects. Oh my gosh. It's done it again. I'm only going to show you the soft ones, for example. Look. Soft. That's not soft. That's egg white. Where's this soft cold? <laughs> Are you a soft boiled egg? You don't look it. You don't look it at all. No, look. Wow. Well, we now know that if the soft cold is like that, then the medium and the hard are basically gonna be even worse. I'm still seeing like a teeny bit of egg white in there. Look at that. Oh my gosh. A hard boiled egg. Even that one's a bit whitey. Look at that, there's some yolk, but that's still, oh my gosh. In conclusion, stick to Elvis. This has never let me down and it's fun.